Hi, this is Tim at the IWC, San Angelo, Texas, courtesy of Pond Megastore. We're going to show you a little bit about how to deal with an overgrown, overcrowded hardy. You see Juan Visa in front of you, which is probably the most prolific growing plant we've seen in a long, long time. Uh, one, two or three inch piece becomes a colony within just a month or two. So you see the full size plant. The next little segment is going to be us chopping it up so okay we're back this is Tim Ken and Zach and we're going to start doing surgery here chopping up one visa as you can see there's crowns coming in from all different angles all over the place so each time where you see a hunk of plant coming up off the end of this that can be cut here as long as you leave the growing part and some root system that will live. You don't need five foot, you just need about this much. So you can see we've got six to 10 or more here, depending on how radical we want to do surgery. So Ken's gonna start hacking up and he's gonna kind of show you what's going on. Basically, he's going to find the rhizome itself, to see where it's at, what angle it's at, and then to see what direction we need to be to try and cut this. Don't have to be very delicate. Well, there's two. Right here. One, actually. And we don't need all of this right here. So. The part he's going to chop off is the old part of the rhizome. Not needed at all. Constitutes one. Let's hear some little eyes that are still viable. Good. Those will grow. This will grow. This will grow. So here's some little propagules here. Here's the main piece that he's got to cut off right here. And you can see, you know, we'll, we'll plot this up and this could be blooming here within, you know, a couple weeks because it's already blooming, but we've done some damage. So it's gonna take a little while to get back from the shock. So here, here's another one. Here's Number another two. one. We'll go down here and get into the primary rhizome is going right here. Get into that. There's two plants. I'm going to make a division here. Just right in between them. There's one. There's two. We just work our way across the pot until they're all gone. More or less. There. And one visa is a uh, water lily that you're going to be able to separate quite more often than a lot of other hardy water lilies. Two here. Pop it here against the back. There's a couple right here. Yeah, there's several here. Okay, here we go. One, two. Another one. It's a little tiny one. Another one. So you can see what appeared to be one plant. We're up to probably eight or nine so far. There's the original plant here. Jump the pot. Coming right out of the pot there. So that's very easy. 
And this was just repotted last year, or was it the repotted this spring? No, it was last year. This is year okay. two years. So two years. So ago. we got about a dozen plants. And so one if we pot. planted this back as is, there would be many many plants come right here, eventuate off of this. If you wanted to propagate more up, this would this would yield many more plants if we just set it back in, which we'll do and see how many we get. Okay. Right over here, we've probably got about 15 or so. 15 plants out of the one bucket, which. You all saw at the very beginning of the video, looked to be just one lily. But, uh, we're going to take some of these and pot them up for you right now. I'm going to show you how to pot a brand new water lily, because this is the condition pretty much that you will get them uh, in the mail. This is a uh, standard lily pot. It's uh, about a 16 by 7. This one might be a little bit smaller. It looks like it might be a 15 by 7, but it depends if it's edge to edge. But it's standard, this is perfect for hardy water lilies. They grow sideways, they don't grow deep. A seven lotus? No, it's a, a hardy water lily pot. Okay, this is a hardy water lily pot. Um, a lot of people use these for lotuses. This is where we're gonna plant these Juan Visas in that you just saw us chop it up. Okay. Ken's in front of you, right behind the pot. He's got some Landon 7803, the absolute best fertilizer on the planet. Hopefully we'll get more out in the market very soon. And we're going to use uh, about uh, six ounces per, for this pot, for this plant. So first off we're going to just salt and pepper style this in the bottom of the pot so that the roots will make it to that eventually. Uh, instead of just plain plastic down there, they're going to be in the fertilizer mix. And then we're going to go forward with the introduction of the soil. And primarily the way that we do this is lay the soil in and try not to disrupt that. We're going to go and uh, bring this pot up to level of about one third of the... Uh, of, uh, we're filling, uh, we're putting dirt here in the pool soil. This is just regular heavy clay soil. Uh, we, we put about uh, half a gallon in here. We're going to put another container. We're not going to really measure it that well. We're going to go about a third full. Uh, of the soil, uh, virgin soil alone, especially if we can get good soil that hasn't been adulterated with some kind of chemical or herbicide is primarily the best way to go. No peat moss mixes or anything like that, just heavy clay. Uh, I'm going to add this in here. When we get about a third level, then we're going to initiate about a third left of the fertilizer that's in this uh, four, five, uh, three or four ounces. We're going to put this in there, such a salt pepper style, and then we're going to bring it in. Now, the reason we're mixing this in in such a fashion is so that the roots will pass through the soil matrix that's been adulterated with the fertilizer. Tim, you can go ahead and add another. We're going to bring this thing on up to two thirds level uh, of the volume. Now, this can work in any size pot. We're going to one third, then we come to two thirds, and we can see how we uh, top dress it with fertilizer. And we're going to take and put another portion. Now we've used about three fourths of this fertilizer up, so it's all it's you know it's incorporated throughout the soil matrix. It, uh, we're going to go ahead and put one more virgin soil on top. We don't necessarily want the roots to be in contact with the fertilizer per se. They're going to get to get into that. We're just going to rake that out smooth and plant the plant. particular case, we don't want to overplant this. We're going to get about three months of heavy bloom out of this particular size pot. We start with a rhizome that we had gone ahead and harvested prior to, and you can see the white roots coming here. I'm going to put this over here. <coughs> Excuse me, this plant is going to grow across this pot. We don't want to necessarily put it here and let it, some people let it grow around in a circle. That's bad because it only gets half of the nutrition that it would get if it were growing across. We know that it's going to travel from this point to this point. When it gets to here, then it will veer off because we've got a circular pot. So that's okay. We'll put one going that way. We know that this is going to travel this way. We're going to put this other one going this way. Tim, if you'll uh, do the honors here, we'll, we'll cover this up. Virgin soil, no more fertilizer. I take a little bit and put just prior to the where the thing's going to grow. 
this way. The fertilization process is over. We're ready to go ahead and uh, top this off. Now, if you place this in deep water, deeper than uh, say whatever the length of the leaf or the stems are. Uh, the petioles. So what will happen is, if you do that, then the thing's going to probably pull us and float. So we'll place a rock or a stone right here, and another stone on the other side to keep these things from moving. Uh, this thing will immediately start to root within 48 hours and uh, produce viable plants within four or five days, and then go ahead and put the foliage out within another uh, two weeks. It'll be in flower again. Okay, now you said a stone. You didn't say a whole bunch of stones. You don't want to cover the crown of the stones, do you? No, we don't want to cover the crown. The crown's over here. The stone goes back here on the rhizome. Now we just want to keep this thing from floating off. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you can get a coat hanger and make a U and put over this to hold it down. Uh, but you have to have something because this thing does not have viable roots that are growing into the soil matrix now, uh, right now, because we've just re redone it so in that context we want to be able to uh, keep it down in there until the roots form and grow. Now some people have also heard that you plant in sand or gravel instead of soil. Do you water recommend lilies, that at no, all? That's true. Water lilies uh, can grow in sand but it's recommended that they grow in uh, some sandy soils are fine if you put the fertilizer in there but remember they have an open matrix so that the soil fertilizer is going to leach through and get out quicker. A heavy clay is better. That's what water lilies like if you can get it and you have it. Here in Texas, the cotton field soil is what we use. We have a lot. But uh, the heavier clay, if you can get it, would be the best thing. Gravel is not recommended. It can be top dressed to keep it this way if you, if you have a problem or cover this with gravel. Primarily, we would cover this with rocks or stones. Uh, to keep the fish away. I use uh, mostly slate, or flat plates that so the, 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 the koi can't uproot and move around. So. Right, and so if they put too much gravel, you will stop the plant from coming up, especially on tropicals, correct? Well, you could, It's you know, if you get too much gravel. But this plant, you want to make sure that when you plant this, that you have the ascending leaf, the newest leaf, and there it is, viable. Make sure that that's ready to go. If we leave something out here, that's not so bad. This little guy here is coming on. This bud probably won't mature because we've dug it up, but uh, the next one or two will. They grow very rapidly, so that's not a big concern. Very rapidly. This thing would be red. This thing would be blooming here. The way we built this, put this together, uh, we went ahead and plant this up. <coughs> this would be growing uh, in a probably about three weeks. It would be budded and ready to flower. All right. Thank you very much, Ken. Yes. Okay, so we have this plant that we planted, uh, and what we're going to do, we talked about something to weight this down temporarily. You can see where the top of it, where the plant's coming out here, uh, and the new foliage is. Back here is the rhizome. I'm going to put a rock on there to kind of hold that down just temporarily, and you take this off in about a week or so, and get rid of this. Okay. You do not need a lot of rocks. You do on not top. need a lot of rocks. You can cover this with rainbow rock or something like this, just about a half an inch or an inch. But not don't it. cover the crown. No, don't cover the crown up because the crown's trying to grow and push out. We don't want that to happen. This guy's just now having a hard time. It's going to have a hard time getting started, so it needs all the help it can get. Okay, now Tim, we're going to lay this in the pool. We've got a block down there. You can see that we put this down here slowly, and it doesn't matter if a little bit of dirt comes up. No, it'll there clear right up. We're going to put this in the water. We're going to twist it around and get our foliage back wet. We want to be sure and keep this wet. All these leaves will re-adjust re, uh, themselves uh, by tomorrow or the next day. The ones, some of them are going to die back because we've uprooted it, so pinch them off within a few days, the ones that are yellowish. The new foliage will generate, and you have a new plant ready for the season. Thank you very much. I've been watching it like every day.